It was a case that both captivated and horrified the nation. A young Texas mother, Darlie Rudye, sentenced to death after the brutal stabbing murders of her two young sons. Darren still believes he's married to an innocent woman. When they were telling me that I had done this, I was in shock. I was completely blindsided, just I couldn't even grasp what they were telling me. Routier has always maintained her innocence. Now, more than 20 years later, the controversial case is the subject of an ABC docuseries, The Last Offense, from executive producer Viola Davis that explores whether she should have been put on death row in the first place. Her conviction is based on very problematic evidence. Attorneys Vanessa Podkin and Aida Lysenring were legal consultants to The Last Offense. I know that she shouldn't have been proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Darren Routier is Darley's ex-husband and the father of her children. All I know is that Darley is 100% innocent. The truth is, is, is always going to be there. It's still there now. On June 6, 1996, in a quiet suburb of Dallas, Texas, 26-year-old Darley Routier made a frantic call to police. Uh, 911, what is your emergency? Ma'am? They just stabbed me and my children. What? They just stabbed me and my children. Who's in? I was asleep upstairs, and I didn't hear a sound from the boys. I didn't hear a sound from Darlie until she started screaming. Officers who arrived at the house found a gruesome scene. The two boys, Damon and Devin, were stabbed to death. Darlie herself had multiple stab wounds, but quickly recovered. She had a gash on her arm that cut to the bone, and she had a slash across her throat that very narrowly missed her carotid artery. She very nearly died that night. Just days later, the grief-stricken young couple laid their two boys to rest. Their quiet community gripped with fear, a killer still on the loose. It's scary to think that, that you know, I don't think they have any suspects yet. When the police were there, they saw a cut screen in the garage which seems to indicate that someone cut the screen from the outside, stepped through the screen into the garage, and headed for the main part of the house. After a week-long investigation, police announced their findings. We believe that the white male suspect described by Darlie Routier as the man that attacked her and murdered her children never existed. We also believe that the wounds present on Darlie Routier were self-inflicted. Prosecutors charged Routier with capital murder, alleging she stabbed herself and then staged the crime scene. I just remember feeling like these people are wrongfully trying to accuse me of murdering my children and trying to kill me. I remember just feeling so scared. It couldn't be happening. This just couldn't be happening. But at trial, prosecutors presented a relentless case, portraying Routier as a self-absorbed, materialistic woman living in debt and suffering from postpartum depression. So they introduced evidence of her, you know, going to strip clubs with her uh, girlfriends on Mother's Day, the fact that she had a sex toy in the house, that she had uh, fake breast implants, that she wore a lot of jewelry. Then there was the matter of a controversial but crucial piece of blood spatter evidence introduced by an expert for the prosecution. What he testified to was that that was cast off blood, that it was consistent with Darley Routier actually taking the murder weapon, striking the boys, and then actually small bits of blood actually came off the blade and landed on the shoulder area. Another key moment, prosecution experts testified tiny fibers from the screen in the Routier's garage were found on a knife found inside their own kitchen. That piece of evidence is devastating to the defense because it shows that someone inside that house cut open the screen. How in the world else could a fiber from that screen in the garage get on a bread knife in the kitchen? But perhaps the most damning piece of evidence of all was her own behavior only eight days after the murders captured by a local TV station. Happy birthday to you.
For some, this may seem a strange thing to do in an odd place and time. singing happy birthday in a cemetery to a son who was brutally stabbed to death just over a week ago. Love you, Devin and Damon. Greg Davis plays that video for the jury, and he says, here's a woman who has just lost her children, and she's literally dancing on their graves. They only watched a little clip of that that the prosecution showed them of Darlie spraying the silly string. They didn't see what came before. They didn't see what came after. We reached a verdict at 3.50. We're just waiting to get into the courtroom now to find out what it is. All 12 jurors raised their hand when asked by the judge if she should get the death penalty for murdering her son. Darlie Routier was found guilty and sentenced to death. She's not so much doting on her kids as she's doting on herself. Juror Carrie Paris recalls the evidence that sealed Routier's fate. There's many ways to mourn the loss of a child or parent, but having a birthday party and throwing silly string in, around in a graveyard, mm, mm I loved being a mother. I loved Devin and Damon. The idea that I would want to murder my children, it was just so ridiculous. 20 years after her conviction, her attorneys want the evidence that put her on death row to be re-examined, including a fingerprint on a living room table imprinted in blood that has never been entered into the federal database. Could well be the print of the person who actually did this. Any chance in your minds that her conviction might be overturned? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, uh, the state used blood splatter analysis um, to convict her. And what we've learned in the 20 years since her trial is that, you know, blood splatter analysis is highly subjective. For now, Routier has no execution date scheduled. To give you some idea, there's been 162 exonerations of people on death row. 20 of those have been by DNA evidence. So she certainly has a shot. Um, but I think more likely the fingerprint running through the database is good. It, that would be more impactful and that would probably get her out quicker. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. The next episode of The Last Defense airs Tuesday night at 10, 9 central, right here on ABC. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.